Welcome to the 2017 EAA Chapter 1397 seaplane land plane flying at the Moorbrook Air Base west of Bemidji, Minnesota. Who are we talking to? Dwayne Clemens. Austin Clemens. And where are you from, guys? Wichita, Kansas. Can you tell me you flew from Kansas to here? Uh, yes. <laughs> Wait a minute. You flew all the way from Kansas to this flying. Well, we were up in the, the cities picking the airplane up, and then we came up here to do the flying before we go home. OK. And uh, what do we have for an airplane? Looks like a Husky? Aviat Husky. Uh, you say you picked the airplane, just this brand new airplane? No, brand new floats. Oh, so you, 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 the Invergrove with Whipline had the floats put on? Yep. Oh my gosh, it's a maiden trip then for it. Yep. Wow. Uh, I see you got the three bedded prop. What's what's for engine in there? 180 horse Lycoming. Obviously, this is your first time here at the Moberg Air Base. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, there's hot coffee up there. Don't, don't want to keep you from that if you've been flying for a while. Oh, we're good. We're good. Okay. Talk to you later then. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Hi, I'm Dennis Johansson. I'm from Lake Norton, South Dakota. And this is my Just Aircraft. I flew from South Dakota <laughs> out here. Is your first time here? To the Moberg Airport. First time here? Yes, it is. Well, welcome to Moberg. Lots going to happen. Are you going to camp out or? I am going to camp out. I'm going to cheat though because I'm not pitching a tent. I'm going to sleep in the back of my car. <laughs> well, that's, that's okay. Uh, tell me about the airplane. Where'd you get it? Did you build it or what? Well, the airplane we bought in the spring of 20, or 2015, and we finished it in 2015. We started it at the factory, had all of the wings and everything ready to go by the time we left the factory, and we brought it back home to cover it, and uh, that was in May of 15, and in December of 15, we had it certified. Now, you say we... Do you have a partner in this, or just... uh, my wife? That's a good partner. Yeah, okay. one of the best. And this is a. I see you got extra big wheels on here. Yeah, those are uh, um, Tundra Tire Alaska Bush wheels, 29 inch. I have a locking tail wheel on it, in the back 8 inch, and uh, it's a 100 horsepower Rotax, 912. What's it take you to get off the ground here at 1,300 feet? About 150 feet, if and, I'm by myself. And landing? Uh, about that or less. Wow, I'm impressed. Okay, I'm gonna look inside. Mm -hmm. You'll notice that this has dual caliper brakes. And that's just about enough to hold it on the ground when you hit the throttle if you wanted to hold it in one place. You have to have that much braking. You have to have that much braking. It's a big wheel with a little rotor. Then the uh, suspension on it, it's got 24 inches of travel. You can drop it down on the ground pretty hard and it'll never bottom out. From where to where? There, down there. I see what looks like a shock absorber, is it? Yes, there's gas shocks on everything on this. That's the suspension in the back. Well, it's hard for me to see because there's so much light on the outside and dark on the inside. What's the, what's the big panel? Big... That big panel is my uh, iPad that I use for navigation. It has a GPS built into it. And then uh, I've obviously got the compass and the slip. 
and then I've got an MGL which is actually an altimeter and uh, airspeed indicator and I can turn that on so you can see what those look like what's the red knob for that's the locking tail wheel and then the uh, fill valve parking brake now what's up in the ceiling up here? That's a sunscreen for my uh, skylight so that I, you know, in the sun it gets awfully warm, so. Got it. Come here. Let me show you how the slats work. Now the slats move in and out and they're just free, floating. So when you normally take off initially, the inertia pushes them back. When you start getting a lift with the angle of attack, they come out in slower flight to give added lift and there's vortex generators on top of the wing and it gives a lot more lift to the plane. Same thing coming down, you're at cruise, they're back and as you start slowing down about 60 miles an hour they, they come out and you can notice that the plane has a lot more lift and a lot more stability. So that means you can go slower for landing? A lot slower for landing. Like what kind of speed? About 32 miles an hour is when I hit the ground. And then on the back side, let me show you these uh, spoilers. For added control in slow flight, you have spoilers that come out with the ailerons in the wings. And it helps stall the wing out and control the yaw. If you're sleeping in the car, as your tent, where's she sleeping on, on the hood? No, she's sleeping in the back. Oh, okay. That's a good thing, otherwise he would be on the hood. Load 27 gallons of gas. 27 on yeah. 100 horsepower Rotec. And next door to you, you got somebody. Looks like a nice mall. Setting up a tent. Yeah. We're gonna go find out what it's doing. Oh, hey, Dave Arcan again. Dave what? <laughs> Arcan. Arcan. Where's Dave from? Well, I came up from Osceola, Wisconsin. Is this your first time here? Well, you know, John and I were just discussing that, and I believe this is going to be the fifth time. I missed your very first one because I was working out of state. Up, I was well, I was working up in Alaska that year when that was going on. Now, were you flying so, in Alaska or something else? No, I went up there on a project for Exxon Oil. Okay. And, okay, this is a 1964. Mall M4. This one has the little O300 in it, the 145 horse Continental. Um, How long have you had it? You know, I would. I'm kind of thinking it's probably about the ninth year now that I've had it, and uh, I've flown it quite a few places. It's it's been to Alaska with me. It's, I've taken it up to Hudson Bay, up to Churchill, and. As far south as down into Georgia. How, how did you plan your trip to go to Churchill? How did you find your fuel? Fuel was easy for that. This thing is pretty economical. I got uh, 40 gallons on board, usable. And uh, I only had to stop at uh, God's Lake out on Elk Island to get a little fuel to make it up to Gillum. And when I got to Gillum and I calculated it out, I really didn't need to stop there but I just I did for a little did seat. you have to make prior arrangements ahead of time or just drop in um, not at uh, not at God's Lake they they have a pretty big operation going there and uh, they just said I called them in advance of course to make sure yeah and they just said yeah just come on in and we, we can top you off if you want to make your trip what kind of fuel 90 octane or 80? 100 low lead 100 is low what lead. they had for me yeah yeah, that's they run in a bunch of DC threes out of there, servicing all the little, little villages, and uh, so. There's a DC three in Maine that's going to go on floats. Oh, that would be awesome to see, huh? It'll fly this fall. Yeah, Angel. that would be wonderful. Yeah, so I mean, it's it's a good little airplane for uh, short field stuff. It's it's not a just like the fellow over Two here, but uh, yeah, different airplanes, different operations to do with them. 
Well, but I think anyway. you have a tent to set up here, it looks like. I'm going to get that tent up before the mosquitoes come rolling out of those trees in, oh, the, okay. in the woods there. I'll go. But, I'll go away. And then I'm going to head over there and get one of them brats, brats? from them. I'll yes. Ju I'll join you. you. Bet. Okay. Thanks, Dave. Hey, yes. Welcome to Moberg Airport. Who am I talking to? Phil Friesan. Who? Phil Friesan. Phil Friesan? Friesan, yeah. Okay, We're and? Joyce. Joyce Friesan. Okay, Joyce. Yeah. Yeah. Now, where are, you, where are you folks from? From Whitewater, Wisconsin. Whitewater, Wisconsin, off of a okay. uh, farm strip there. Yeah. Oh, all right. And yeah. is this your first time or third time here? No, we came last year. We had so much fun, we came back. Well, the food is good. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Even better. Nice yeah. camping. What are you flying? Cessna 180. Oh, it's a 180? Okay. Yeah. Uh, Do you ever have it on floats? No. Oh, that's sacrilegious. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know water where I live, so. Oh, okay. Yeah, I can't, yeah. see, I don't know the area. I can't, yeah, yeah. I can't picture it. Yeah. Well, I have to look at the airplane a little bit. I see you got chrome all, I call it chrome, or polished aluminum. Do you have a hard time keeping that aluminum shiny? Yes. <laughs> Too much work. <laughs> okay. I'm going to give you a, a secret way to take care of that in a second. Okay. The weather on Friday was scattered thunderstorms around, mostly to the north, and there was a few people that wanted to fly in from Fargo, North Dakota, but there were some thunderstorms between Fargo and Bemidji, and they decided to wait until Saturday. For those that came early, we had food, we had movies in the hangar, and we had a campfire. Hi there, David. Here we, here, here we have some homemade beans. They're doctored up. Now, you buy them by the seven-pound can, but then you doctor them up. Brown sugar? A little brown sugar, Worcestershire, Worcestershire, Worcestershire. Worcestershire. <laughs> and you can put in, uh, I've got a little bit of sriracha in there for a little bite. Sriracha. Onions. No lutefisk. No lutefisk. No, we gave that up here a few years ago. People, I took a lot of beans home. Nobody eat them. <laughs> but, yeah, so we're warming that up, and then we're going to come back, and we're going to heat up some... Uh, sauerkraut and put our cook up some brats and put them in the sauerkraut and keep them steamed up and that's what we're having the night for supper so we're do we uh, have downtown meat sponsoring our uh, friday night hot dog feed we're having uh, boomerang brats from downtown meats foot long uh, hot dogs this is their brand it's a it's a certain brand of their uh, brat and some wild rice brats they make cheesy brats but their most common one that people uh, like it's called a boomerang and they're pre-cooked all we have to do is eat them so we're gonna have we got about eight dozen for tonight we'll feed probably 70 people and uh, it'll be brats and homemade beans and sauerkraut and Arnold's doing funnel cakes it's a dessert and that's a real special that we started last year yeah so it should be a pretty nice feed tonight and then we'll do a bonfire at when it gets dark assuming it's not raining and show a movie <coughs> Dave Quam showing a movie here and uh, aviation films this time aviation films and then tomorrow we have our big fly in uh, Right now we've got as many planes as uh, yeah, yeah. as usual for early. We should get a few more in tonight. So we've got one float plane and um, four parked over there. And what happened to the float plane that came in earlier and left again? He's actually he actually parked over here on the other side of the hangar, oh, okay. and they put up a tent right next to their plane. They're parked on the shore. Oh, yeah, they're right there. It's on camera. I got it. <laughs> we got proof, Dave. <laughs> the evidence. This is the sampling crew? Yeah. That's the setup, <laughs> yeah, the setup make a crew. Good face. Smile. If it passes this group, then. That's the Joe setup crew. We might let them sample. Let's smile. <laughs> oh, you got your official. You got your hat on, so you must be all, you must be all set. Yeah, that's the setup gotta, crew. We might gotta, let them sample there. Well, what do we got here now? Funnel cake toppings. What a selection. Now this must be for dessert? Yes. Yes. Or appetizer maybe. Or appetizer or supper or breakfast or whatever. <laughs> yes. Breakfast isn't here, is it? No. Nope. This is, is this your secret recipe? Uh, it's not secret. Huh. But yes, it is my recipe. And who wait a minute now, being it's your recipe, who am I talking to? Elaine Kleinsasser, this is my husband Arnold. 
I knew that, but I had to ask you. <laughs> <laughs> What's your name, Hava? Don't be shy. How old are you, Ira? How old are you? Two? Five, two, three? Two? Old enough to know better to say something. <laughs> Who am I talking to? Paul Jan. Ann Heimbaugh. Okay, and your seaplane behind you, I assume. Yes. Yes. Is this your first time here? Yes. Oh, it is? Yes. Okay, now where are you from? Duluth. Well, that's what, a two-hour flight then? A little less, about yeah. a little mm -hmm. over an hour and a half maybe. We, yeah. we came a different way. We went to um, we went to Orr and then Crane Lake and then uh, Baudette, Lake of the Woods, and, and then here. Okay. <laughs> Tell me about the airplane. How, how big is the engine? It's 180 horsepower like 180? Yeah. Holy minnow buckets. <laughs> 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 like a slingshot off the water? Yes. That's what it is. Yes. Yep. Okay. Uh, how long have you had the airplane? Uh, six years. Where'd you get it from then? Locally? In Eveleth. Oh, he's, sure. He's sitting up there. Why owned by Huntley? somebody from Canada. Is he still around? No, I don't I don't think so, no. Did you recognize the name? Nope. Well, I guess it's not around then, yeah. I guess. Okay. Yeah. Uh, this is your first time here, and you'll be leaving sometime late, sometime late Saturday afternoon. Yeah, maybe midday. I like the puppy. It's not a perfect thing to chew. Yes, oh, yeah. definitely. How old? Four, four months. months. Oh, four months. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Wait, how can I get it? I can't get the camera over far enough. That's all right. I'm, we'll get her later. <laughs> I'm going to try something. The camera's still running. And i got to get the Fido here. Because I happen to like dogs. Look, the most expensive toy lays on the ground, and the cheap plastic bottle <laughs> is what he goes for. Yep. That's pretty much all done. Now that's what's going to be like a time kit, isn't it? Right? Maybe. Uh, regular? Well done. After you had your fill, part of the program for the evening was to do a little local flying before sunset. We have videoed all of our fly-ins for the last five or six years, and these can be seen online under YouTube, or just go to our website, the address is below, and you can click on these films to see what's going on. Not every weekend was great weather, but we managed to have a good time, rain or shine. Now, Friday started a little on the slow side because of the weather, but everybody enjoyed doing some local flying, whether on wheels or on floats. The haze in the air that Friday evening did make for some very nice sunset pictures with the airplanes flying right on by the sun. If you're a pilot and you can't make it because of the weather of where you are, well then you drive and bring the family because this event is a family oriented fly-in. Now, not everybody can be flying in an airplane with their kids, but at least the kids can see what's going on, and maybe you can spark an interest in aviation in their hearts. And who knows, someday your kids may be flying you to a fly-in somewhere.
Why don't you go to the dock? I don't know. I thought I could get closer. I thought I could get closer. I can come out and get you one at a time. Yeah. Well, Jump on your back. Ten dollars. <laughs> this is the part of float flying people forget about. Some days. Water runners aren't up. Hey, Brian. Yeah, turn the props. Do oh. <laughs> you want to pull my water runners up here? Yeah. I can spin it around. How many guys can walk it around? Got 15 minutes. <laughs> oh, oh, shit. Stand on the back. Okay, now move to the front. He made it. He's not getting his feet wet. At our Friday night campfire in the movie, we didn't run a full-length feature this year. We ran some short films. For example, this one on the World War II aviators, followed by the closing night at the Oshkosh Air Show. As it started to get darker, a number of us stood around the campfire for a while, and it wasn't long we started pulling chairs out of the hangar, and we had quite a crowd around the fire. It was a beautiful evening with the sunset we had, and great aviation stories coming from everybody. And then Saturday morning with blue skies, the land planes and seaplanes started flying in for lunch at the Moberg Air Base. I got a lot of time in a 172 and it's been a long time. 
And I saw that sitting here. I said, I have to buy a half hour or 20 minutes of float time with you if it works out today. Or an hour. Well, the air works the same. Yeah. It's the water work. Yeah, it's the water. I mean, it brings back memories. I stood here looking at that airplane yesterday. Tears. You got a lot of time on a 172. I got a lot of time on a 172. That doesn't mean anything. It just means you got a lot of time on a lot of experience. A lot of experience. Uh, lot so of experience. It's, it's been 15 years. And uh, one more time. Okay. One more time. Yeah. We'll do it today, Dave. Okay. This Cessna 172 came from uh, Grand Rapids Aviation in Grand Rapids. Mark Cook is being shown here backing the airplane into the water. Uh, Mark has had this plane at the Moberg Air Base for a few weeks as he is the seaplane instructor for the area. Anyone interested in getting a seaplane ready would co contact Mark. And this is the aircraft I had a chance to fly in. I owned a 172 and I put about 3,000 hours on it. But after 20 years of not flying, was I rusty? Well, I was about to find out. As it turned out, I didn't do too bad, but I'd like to go back and get one more hour on this before the aircraft has to go back to Grand Rapids. This pontoon boat served two purposes. One, if a seaplane got into problems, then the boat would go out to help them out and bring them back. Second, it was a way to take some of those people who are not pilots for a boat ride around the lake. And did the kids ever love this? In fact, there's a young guy driving it right now. Of course, he's got the adult right behind him. Brian Shaw is on the dock holding the propeller, helping turn the airplane around into the wind so Mark can get out there and run it up a little bit, then do a couple flights before he uh, takes the passenger up. You want the airplane turned around facing into the wind if you can, because if you fire up, if it's facing the wrong way, you've got a problem, because there's no brakes. Like a land plane with wheels, you can stop. But once you start the engine on a seaplane, you move forward, so you want to make sure you're aiming the direction you want to go, and that, of course, that's preferably into the wind. It started just the same as my airplane. <laughs> it sounded just like it. First, I mean, the first quick, quick. Now this is Saturday morning coffee somebody brought in. I've never heard of coffee like this before. I hope it's coffee.
to all pilots the starting of an engine and idling is music to their ears. talking to? Dave Stegmeyer. Dave Stegmeyer? Yes. No volume here. Oh, Dave, oh, where are you from? <coughs> South St. Paul. Did you uh, fly in here today? I, I fly in, flew into Bermidji uh, this morning. I got an RV-8. Uh, I flew up this morning. It took me about an hour and ten minutes to get up here. That's I, it? That's it, yeah. RV, how come you didn't come here? So we'll... I didn't know you had the airstrip here. I always thought this was a seaplane base. <laughs> well, that's kind of both and so forth. Yeah, that, I didn't know that, so that's why I didn't stop in here. But... Now, this is your first, obviously, it's your first time first here. This first time I've been here. That's How'd I... you find out about the event? Well, I saw it on the uh, uh, DOD, DOT uh, website. I like, kind of looked there to see where the breakfast fly-ins are on the weekends. So I like to, uh -huh. If the weather's good, I'd like to leave, at least have pancakes one day a week. And, uh, well, in the you, summertime. Even though they come from a, from a box mix, they're not grandma's mix, you know. Well, that's true, but you know, they have all the fun of going to go do it. That's right. <laughs> See, I like, I like to say, well, I fly off someplace to have cold pancakes, cold eggs, cold sausage, and cold coffee. <laughs> I never thought about that before. <laughs> well, I don't know about the eggs. Yeah. Well, welcome to the Moberg Seaplane Base. Uh, if you look around, it kind of like, looks like in the middle of Alaska. It, looks it does. It looks very nice. Very nice. North Woodsy, I'd call it. Yeah, yeah. You, you wouldn't know that Bemidji is only a few miles away. That's right. I could say I'm just outside of Anchorage. But wait, wait a minute. I, I, oh, here I, you mean. I could, like say, I could say that. I could say that. It's just outside of Anchorage, yes. Tell me about the logo on your shirt there. Well, this is the logo for uh, the C-130 unit at Minneapolis International. It's the uh, 934th. It's an air reserve unit. And I flew C 130s for 25 years, uh, six years on active duty, and then 20 years in the uh, uh, Air Force Reserve. That's quite a switch from a C 130 to what you're flying now. More yeah, fun. But it still has props, and well, yeah, it's more fun, but the 130 is a lot of fun too. I mean, it's like here at Mobridge, we could easily, Mobridge rather, we could easily put a 130 in on this trip if you had to. As the airplane started to arrive, an EAA chapter member would act as safety officer to direct the airplane into a parking place. The reason this airplane looks like it's coming around the corner, well, it basically is. There's a dog leg at the south end of the runway. Those that are flying in on Saturday morning for fellowship with other pilots and a really good lunch will be parked on the east side of the runway. Notice on the right over there's an airplane parked by the trees. The last section is reserved for those coming in on Friday night that want to camp out and stay overnight. Uh, it's a good spot to be out of the wind and, and it's a good spot to stay away from the active runway. How'd you get here? Did you, did you get, get here by bike? Did you fly in? Where's your airplane? Okay, Wait a minute. Okay. You got here by pickup? Oh, 
Not your bicycle. No. Oh, Romeo is at A lot of traffic today. What's your name? Tavi. Tavi? Tavi. Tavi? What's the last name? Flying Sasser. Okay. Welcome to the flying. I see you're official because you got the Moberg hat on. Who am I talking to? Matt Redka. And where did Matt come from? Matt came from West Fargo. Is this your first time at this base? First time. How'd you happen to know about it in the first place? Oh geez, I was posted on a website. I was hoping to come in last night and camp out, but thunderstorm between uh, here and there kind yeah, of shut me down. Yeah, it, was, it went around us, but still. Yeah. What? Okay, tell me about your Taylor Graph. 1946, uh, Taylor Craft. Did you, it looks like it's brand new. Did you, um, my dad and I restored it a couple years ago. And still. <laughs> okay, so that's, that, what, that, that's fresh paint from only two years? Yeah, going what, on three now. What size engine? Uh, O200. Welcome to the Moberg Seaplane Base and Land Strip Flying. Thanks for having me. Okay, get some chow. Well, chow will be served shortly. We don't need to do a cut three, huh, Matt? Wait a minute, you gotta go to the table and get your official hat. You want me to wear one of those? Well, it's about $10 a piece, though. Uh, you know, I got a lot of hats, sir. <laughs> I don't know that. Okay. I don't know. I like, I like it, but I like the idea of having sporting the uh, local hat, but... Yeah, I understand. This is Bob and Mary Clausen from Argyle, Minnesota. Argyle, Minnesota? That's correct. Okay, I know where that is. Yep. How'd you know about Is this your first time here? First time here, but we've stopped in at the airport here before okay. with the car, I guess. It's the first time flying. Okay, yep. so you flew from Argyle with, with the 172? Yep. Actually, this one is at, based at Stephen, D41. Well, we have a hangar of our own at at a farm in Argyle, Minnesota. So. Okay. Uh, what year is the 172? This is a 1973 model, Model M. Oh, uh, that's what I had, the Model M. Okay. Standard engine, 150 horse? 150, yes. Yep. Is this your first time here? First time here, yep. How'd you know about the flying this weekend? Uh, a poster at the Stephen Airport was uh, hanging up in there. And I also, we also got it on... Oshkosh email thing. So. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so. Well, the corn is cooking over there, so we're gonna. I don't know how soon they're gonna serve it, but you're just in time for lunch. Okay, that sounds great. Welcome to Moberg. Yes. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. Bye bye. Yeah. Yep, bye. I jumped into this side by side ATV to catch up with this airplane. It was shiny and beautiful, and I didn't know what it was, so I had to get there before the pilot left the plane and headed off to lunch. Okay, I'll get out. Wow. Let me grab you before the guy gets you his registration. Oh. I got first. Who am I talking to? Mark Holiday. Where's Mark from? Lake Elmo. And what are you flying, Mark? It's sure shiny. It's a Swift. That's all you're going to say about the airplane. How about the horsepower? 210 horse. Oh, Jesus. How fast? About 180. Knots. Miles. Miles per hour. Sounds first, better when you say miles an hour. Yeah, yeah, it sure does. Your first time here at Moberg? Yes. How'd you know about the flying? Oh, I heard about it, and uh, I s met uh, uh, a guy at Park Rapids, and then I came up to Bemidji and had breakfast, so I thought I'd come over here and have lunch, and I got to go back to Bemidji to meet a guy. Full day for you. Yeah. Okay, thanks a lot. All right, Bye. thank you. Too well, good. Is it done? That's good. Is okay. it soft? Okay, let's see. We got so, it. Should I start pulling it? It's not even boiling. <laughs> I use 91. Just so it doesn't have ethanol in it. I don't need it for the octane. It's I just don't. That is slick. Great work. They work good. The prop's got nothing in it. 
Yeah, there, total that generator. Motor is just in case. Okay. How many amps do you get on? Go. You know, it's supposed to put out six amps, is it but that's at two. But I mean, let's cover it. But at least the battery doesn't go dead. I don't. I mean, it'll it'll keep it flying. Hi, Dave. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> they are really awesome. Here he comes on as a son as John Deere B. Huh? <laughs> Denny, where are you from? From Park Rapids. And what do we have here? This is a Legal Eagle designed by Leonard Milholland. Um, it's a half VW, Legal Ultralight, 150, 254 pounds. Um, flies about 53 miles an hour. It was built with a group of students at Park Rapids High School over the period of three years. And uh, been flying it for two and having a great time with it. How do you keep warm? You don't, you put on plenty of clothes and you dry, fly in the sun and that's how you stay warm. Any kind of estimate on what this costs to we, build? I've got about $6,000 into the whole airplane. The whole airplane, okay. Motor, prop, um, everything. I see a small battery inside. Is that the charger down below? That is a turbine charger. Um, barely keeps the battery charged. The battery is the only ignition, only power for the ignition system. So when the battery goes dead, the engine dies. Ooh. So the generator helps to keep the battery. You haven't um, got room for a spare battery in there to switch to? Um, not to be legal. Okay. <laughs> so it's everything's a weight limit. And how much does it weigh again? 254 pounds. The whole airplane? Yes. Just Jeez. the way it sits, without fuel. Without fuel and oil. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Obviously, it's not much of a problem with the prop this one. <laughs>
Tim, what am I looking at here? This is my 2010 Remos. I bought it brand new in 2010. Uh, it's got about 700 hours on it. It's got a 912 Rotex engine. It cruises at about 125 miles an hour true airspeed. Uh, it's got a three blade prop which they use in Europe to cut down on the noise. Uh, it's, it's made out of uh, all fiberglass and carbon fiber. The wings fold back alongside the airplane so it'll fit inside of a seven foot uh, trailer. It's got a, a parachute and autopilot. Cool. Uh, it's got a full dash, two GPS's, uh, two radios, all the all the good stuff. Why why two GPS's? Because it had a, a 496 and I wanted a 696, so they just added the 696. And where'd you get it from? Where's the dealer? I see him in, in, uh, at Oshkosh. Uh, the dealer that I bought this from, I think was a rep for the company. It, I think okay. it, they flew it out of uh, uh, where Walmart's at. Uh, that's where, that's where their, their U.S. headquarters was. Now, did they bring it to you? You had to go get it. They, they actually delivered it. Uh, uh, two people, the mechanic and, and uh, a pilot brought it to me. Two? And where was that at? Now, they delivered it in, in uh, Lake Havasu City, Arizona. Oh wow! And then they stayed overnight, and and the mechanic went through a bunch of things with me, and we did like a an inspection, like a five-hour inspection or something like that. So it was a real nice experience. It's a beautiful flying airplane. Uh, you can fly it with one finger on the stick. Um, it takes off in you know very short. It's it's a very nice little light sport. It's made in Germany, really high quality, nice craftsmanship. Okay, what do I got here? What are the two panels, right, one above the other? Uh, one is one is a flight panel and one is an engine panel. Uh, it's got the, the two radios, uh, the two GPSs, a couple steam gauges. Uh, it uses two throttles so you can run with each or, either right or left hand. That's interesting. Um, it, it's a little bit different. This is actually the brake here. Uh, you, you don't, the, the pedals actually turn the front wheel for, for taxiing as, as well as the tail. So it's a handbrake. And a handbrake in the middle. What's in the white tube? That's, that's a, a parachute. Uh, in case of problems and you have time, you just pull a handle and that shoots the parachute off the top. And that blows the panel out in the back? It, it actually blows a hole right through the part of the roof there that's thinner. It came standard with the 496, but I like the, the bigger window of the 696 and some of the other options that the 696 gives you. It, you know, it, it's it's uh, autopilot. It'll fly right off the GPS, or you can fly off a heading. This would be the handle for pulling the parachute. Emergency That's why hand. it's keyed up so you can right. pull back. So kids, you know, or someone, in, you know, like, oh, what's this? You know, I mean, it's a big... Now, what are the three gauge, what are the three pullers on here for? Uh, it's your choke. Uh, it's a heater, a vent, and a carb, carb heat. Okay. It's got nice leather interior. Behind here holds a 22-gallon fuel tank. Not, it's not in the wings. And then back in this area here, uh, it's a storage compartment. Uh, it's like long enough to put a set of golf clubs in. Whoa. Okay. It's got it's got about every instrument you can imagine in it. Like some when I first bought it seven years ago, people said there's some some jets that don't have this much stuff in it back in the day. Oh, oh yeah, I agree with that. The wings fold back and then turn sideways, so that the plane is just about six feet wide. Then when the wings are folded up, and then the rear tail has to come off because that's about nine feet wide. To go in a trailer, so it's just it pins off with a few pins and, and snaps, and then the, you'd hang the the tail or the tail on the on the on the side of the trailer. So it fits nicely in an enclosed trailer if someone wants to go fly in different parts of the country or something like that. It's all glass. They're like eight feet wide when they're folded, so like on an enclosed trailer, you got like an inch, right? Yep. Well, this is folds up and it's about six feet wide, so you've got some room.
This van was converted just for ice fishing, so we'll take a look inside and see how it was all put together. Uh, Roger, what kind of fish are you going after with a hook like this? Whatever wants to bite on it. Whatever wants to bite on it. <laughs> yeah. This is your ice fishing van. Yeah, correct. Okay, you look like you're standing in the hole in the ground. Yeah, what I you, am. What I'm, have you got here? I'm not on ice today, but come about January, I'll be on the ice. Now, now that slides that much? Yeah. Slide it up for me. This slides up and down. And that's for, for driving it down the road. Right. And then it just sits up there okay, like that. You pull it and bolt it, and when you get on the ice, it's parked, and you drop it down. Right. And then you drill the hole in the ice. So that way, when the, you're sitting on here, or bouncing, it stays put. It stays put. So it can be the the uh, you could be in a hole or something, and then that goes up and down. Okay. So that's kind of how it works. You got electric auger, so there's no exhaust from the gasoline one, and so. You don't even have to get out of the van. Is that 12 volt? Oh, you can r walk right from your seat, stand up, come over here, put the the slide down, and start drilling. And this has a reverse on it, so the slush will go underneath the ice, so you don't have to bail out the slush oh, like okay. normal. So, so you can drill a hole with the the skirt yeah. up. Mm-hmm. You can. Yeah. And then reverse it, and that slush. And it sloshes underneath the hole. Yeah. Yep. Oh, that's great. Yep. It's all wheel drive. You get the camera there. So you can put that down in the hole and see where oh, look at that. the fishies are. Use him for a decoy. Is that a male and fish or female fish? Sometimes they do. I haven't figured it out yet. <laughs> sometimes they do to bite on that too. Yeah. Oh, they bite on the fish? Oh, sure. Yeah, they will, yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. so, bite on the leaf. That's kind of nice. You have a separate battery someplace? Or? It's right here. I got my. Um, oh, I see a jumper battery. Carbon dioxide detector is on here for when, because the motor's running it when I'm in here. And uh, just and there, that's on, and so is the light bulb. 17 watts LED. Okay. What's the beep mean? The beep means this is on. And that measures just your voltage? That measures the carbon dioxide in the vehicle. Okay, got it. So, you know, I'm, I'm having the engine run because that's what I'm using for heating. So, you know, I want to make sure that I don't gas myself. And your chairs are sitting on milk buckets. They're milk. Milk cases. Yep. <laughs> and they're both seats on a milk case. Well, it yep. serves the purpose. So when I got it, the, the roof of the van was right here. So I took the existing roof and raised it up and then put insulation behind here one inch and then carpeted it all. Put insulation under the floor here too. So. Wow. So it should be pretty nice for in the winter. Hopefully. I'll try it out next winter in January. Here on 15th, as you come out of the Moberg, take a left, there's a big white tent. I'm Jim Headland. Norma Moberg Headland. Michelle Moberg Kirby. Kyle Kirby. Wait. Okay. Kalei Kirby. Courtney Kirby. Mark Moberg. Let me get you over there in a second here. Yeah. Let me sneak in front of you. Like what happened was the, the, the museum the raindrops. Rain, yeah. yeah. rain would do that. Before that, oh, the, the okay. classic aircraft in the 20s or 30s. Yeah. So he's got. Uh, my name is Bill, Bill Holsgrove from uh, Detroit Lakes, but now I live in Monaga. And obviously you've got the most unusual airplane compared to everybody else. What do you call it? Dude, this is, uh, the FAA calls it a gyroplane, but you and I call it a gyrocopter. Gyrocopter, okay. Now, the rotor is free spinning with the wind? It is. It's the only way this thing is going to work. Uh, there's a pre-rotator button. There's a button to push before you go flying. Get the, you get it spinning before it's time to go flying. And from the time you take off, it spins by itself. Now at this kind of sea level, 1,300 feet, what's your takeoff run? About the same as a 150? It all depends on the wind. It's uh, somewhat less than that. It's a lot less than that. Okay. I know landing is pretty short, isn't it? 
It is, if you saw me land today, which you didn't. You no, weren't I didn't. looking. <laughs> Having corn in the cob. Uh, but it's uh, probably 100 feet today. Wow, okay. And, and the horsepower? Uh, this is the Rotax uh, 914 engine, 115 horsepower. This is the Rotax uh, turbocharged engine. Okay, did you build it, buy it, or what? I did. Uh, all the parts are made in Spain, the company's in Spain, but it's sent to the United States in uh, kit form, and um, some people have the company here in the United States build it. Uh, I chose to build it myself, so I'm the, uh, I have the repairman certificate that goes with it. How long have you had it? Uh, about four months, since April, May, June, July, August, oh, four months now. That's why it looks so shiny. Yeah. It's brand new. Yeah. What else don't I know about a gyrocopter? Everything. You okay. ask me some questions, I'll tell you some lies. Answers. Okay. <laughs> well, talk to me about, I, I have, you know, I'm on a float, I'm a float plane person, so gyro, I've, I've looked at them, it's got my interest, but I don't, I haven't done my homework. Um, you got to prompt me, man. Okay. Ask me a question. Somebody ask a question. Okay. We just got it. Ready? We just got a question from the audience. Uh, how fast does it fly? And the answer is about 95 miles per hour. 100 on the top end, but uh, 90 is a comfortable. Okay. Cruise. Now, because the rotors are spinning, how slow can you go? Uh, just like an airplane, it has a slow speed, and this one's about 30 miles per hour. Full throttle, uh, hanging on the prop, 30 miles per hour. I fly helicopters a little bit. Okay. And there's a lot of parts that have to be changed. Do you have any time requirements on the rotor up there? Uh, yes, the rotor has a time limit on it, but it's uh, quite high, or two or three or four thousand hours. It's a lot. And there's one bolt up the top. That it's called the teeter bolt, and that should be changed every couple of years. And that's it for maintenance. There are no other moving parts that really need attention, like a helicopter. It's um, easy maintenance. It's an easy system, a simple system, uh, both in design and uh, maintenance. Now, when you do a, a pre-flight check on this here, mm -hmm. uh, it's pretty high up in the air. Yep. I mean, what do you look for? Sure. All those nuts and bolts that you see there, there are four, um, yep. five. There are five bolts on this one going down onto the uh, plates. There's a main hinge bolt, and then the teeter bolt I referred to right in the very middle. Okay. Teeter bolt because it's where the rotor teeters back and forth. So those are important to check. Um, nuts and bolts along the control rods. And okay, uh, check the oil. Area. Okay. Check the oil, and that's about it. Okay, the rotor still spins by itself. I can pull it a bit farther. Very good. Thank you. Oh. Newest airplane order. Hey! <laughs> Pilot certificate goes to Jacob Kidd. Jacob, are you here? I hope you're here. Oh. We'll try again. Maybe he's um, around the corner. Who knows? Longest flight to Moberg Seaplane Base. Bill Joyce? Bill Friesen? Bill and Joyce Friesen? Uh, they left. They did, huh? It said they flew 444 miles. And they're from Wisconsin, Whitewater, Wisconsin. And then the most senior pilot, those two, we had one from, got their rating in 69, 70, and 67. 1967, uh, when he got his ticket, Mike Severson. Mike here? Hey, Mike, come on up. Mike's from Wabin, Wabin, Minnesota, right down the road. Thanks for coming in. Get your picture here with Dave. Congratulations. Yeah, all right. Great. Congratulations. You've been flying for? Uh, solo in 66, then flying commercially in the base in 68, and still flying. Good for you. That's terrific. So you've been flying for many, many years of career? Yes, uh, 20 years of the Army. Uh, 10 years off the hospital at Fargo with the helicopter. I went to Pixeling, flew for uh, 40, 11 years at Pixeling. Plus the Jets. Yep. Four years out of the hospital when we had age 65. That was six years ago and I'm going to be 60. Terrific. Big hand for this guy. Big hand for uh, mm. Mike. Clear pilot. Go fly. Okay, these other plaques we'll send out to him. And we've got a uh, drawing for the big prize here. 
This would be a David Clark headset. Okay, David Clark headset. Uh, been an old standby for years and years. Uh, every a movie you watch with an aviation scene in the cockpit of a helicopter or an airplane, for some reason, has a David Clark headset on. There's got to be some kind of a conspiracy going there. But no, good headsets. Um, kind of excited to give this one away because uh, I know who's getting it. Um, he's always the first one here on Saturday morning. And if you ever go to Grand Rapids uh, for coffee, you're gonna you're gonna meet Dick. So Dick, you won the headset. Hey, thank you very much. I didn't want to try and pronounce your last name. <laughs> Break it down in four syllables. Grabarkiewicz. Grabarkiewicz. Say that again. Grabarkiewicz. I'm with him. I'm with my. I'm not going to repeat it. Grabarkiewicz. Just break it down to dick and you're easy. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. When anybody headed for the pontoon boat, the kids were ready. They came out of nowhere, and a lot of them just stayed on the boat for a while, anticipating a ride. Well, I wanted to get a shot of the gyrocopter taking off, and I don't know what I did. I think I probably didn't hit the record button. I thought I did. So I missed the takeoff, but I got him flying by anyway. Well, you could walk around the airport and look at the airplanes, but there's something magical about being in a boat and driving along a number of seaplanes parked on the shore. It's kind of an indicator of there's adventure here. Some of these airplanes could have taxied out of the water by the ramp because they have wheels in the floats that come out for landing on an airport. It's called amphibian floats. They can go to the airport or they can go to the water. Now when they're in the water, these wheels retract up inside. Seaplane Pilots, come up and get a brochure from the Seaplane Pilots Association, find out what it's all about, and get a copy of the quarterly publication. 
If you don't fly floats, find out more about it and join the Seaplane Association. I've got magazines to give out to anybody who wants them, and we'll take your application whenever you want. And ask to join the Seaplane Pilots Association here at the Moberg Flyer. Note the wall behind the ladies serving. There's tools hanging up there. These were Ralph Moberg's tools. When he passed away, the family decided to leave everything there as it was, kind of like a museum or a memorial. So everything that Ralph Moberg used to run his airport and seaplane base is still hanging on the wall. A bit of history. What's there to say with these next photos? Nothing. The photos speak for itself. Look at the flowers. 